Let us start with, let us now invite our speakers back to take the hot seats and moderating this discussion will be Ms. Priscilla Gunn, the director of VRO. And, it's, and the speakers in the panel will be Dr. Fermin Diaz, Mr. Gasper Tan, as well as Ms. Ang Lee May. Priscilla, over to you. Hello, a very good afternoon to everybody. And uh, once again, happy to see all of you again. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your precious uh, afternoon to really uh, be connected with the fellow VM community to learn and to grow together on, on volunteer management. And more importantly, uh, how volunteer management can be a strategy to help your organization succeed, to help your organization um, take that quantum leap into the future with that wraparound model, not just for services, but also to catalyze all your other capabilities and core functions in order for you to, um, you know, um, serve the beneficiaries more efficiently. So, um, you know, we've got um, uh, lots of questions coming um, and um, I thought um, just wanted to also share that, you know, um, this session is also very opportune because it is also um, held hot off the, the back of, you know, the announcement of the Forward Singapore strategy by our DPM Lawrence Wong and how all of you have a very pivotal role in taking Singapore forward with what you are doing on volunteer management. Whether today you're here as a volunteer management practitioner or you're here, um, you know, as a senior management um, or as a board member, um, I think it is, takes a whole of organizations to really, um, you know, steamroll and to accelerate um, the volunteer management strategy. So lots of questions coming in. I uh, encourage you to continue to pump your questions uh, into the pigeon hole. Um, it's been shared uh, in the chat, uh, but perhaps uh, let's just jump in straight, um, you know, into one of the top voted questions. Lah. Um, and maybe let me see who we can pose this question to. Maybe we can pose this question um, to um, um, Gasper. Um, you know, um, so the question goes, um, how can volunteer managers convince our management and perhaps the board um, to actually do more for volunteer management to give that strategic direction. Um, you know, there's always, uh, time is always an issue, but of course this should take focus um, given that it is going to take the organization forward. So Gasper, I know you have an engaged uh, task force, uh, you know, by SOS in a way like a volunteer committee and your board from what I understand is super involved in volunteer management, very hands-on. Perhaps you want to share with us uh, your, your, your experience and how our volunteer managers today and uh, present here today can help to uh, a moral station and persuade boards and senior management to give influence on that. Uh, yeah, before I dive into that, I think the question is very interesting. How can we as a VM, volunteer management, convince our management to do more for volunteer management? Um, yeah, it's a very interesting question. And I think the, the leader or the leadership team in the organization first need to view volunteer management as critical part of the organization's success. You know, if the leadership team or the leader don't view this um, volunteer management as a critical part of the organization, organization success, then, then very difficult to move forward, right? Because the, the person who, who lead and, and take charge of that organization don't feel that this is an important role. But having said that, I think I, I also highlighted that uh, um, the leaders, just now in my slide, um, the leadership role in, in driving and uh, the strategy and developing the culture, volunteerism culture, is very important in two in four areas. Number one is of course the it has to work with the board, you know, to to actually discuss and see where should we position volunteer and and how should we deploy volunteer uh, in an organization. I think um, in 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 many agency like ours. Our board members are not operational people, right? I think it's the important. I think it's important that the leaders or the leadership team need to be able to present the case, right? The situation, the needs, uh, and the importance of why we need volunteer in our operations. I think that's very important uh, first step, uh, and then and then um, collectively as a team, the board and the the leadership team will have to make decision, uh, intentional decision to say, okay, where should we have that volunteer in? And where should we deploy this volunteer? And how should we deploy? For example, we want 80% of this work be done by volunteer, right? And that is a intentional decision and a strategic decision because then you will focus your work on 
how to develop volunteer to take up 80% of the workload in this um, in that specific role that you want the, the, the volunteer to play. For example, our hotline. All right, our hotline, we set a standard that the, the volunteer need to have majority role to play in our critical, uh, in our in all this uh, crisis hotline. Uh, and supporting, so, so that's number one. Number two is that the role of the staff and the volunteer has to be very clear. Otherwise, it'll be very confusing. And again, if I may use um, SOS uh, hotline example, our staff and the volunteer role are very clear. They don't um, duplicate. And the, the role of the staff is to support and to and, and, and enable the volunteer to do their work all right? and to intervene when there's a um, at-risk case or, or crisis cases and things like that, right? So you have to be very clear uh, in terms of your role and responsibility. Um, the leadership also need to involve um, themselves uh, in engaging the volunteer. Otherwise, it's just like engaging your staff, right? If you, you don't engage your volunteers, you don't know where and what is the issue and you, you always feel that they are not important. But actually, volunteer can give you a lot of insights to your operations, the issues that you'll be facing, and things like that. So, so to answer that question in a nutshell, I think the, the first thing, first, first step to take is that the leadership team has to recognize that volunteer management is a critical part of the organization's success before we can take to the next step to talk to the board and present the case. Because again, I say board members, majority of them are not. Um, into the operation, so they do not know, you know, where are the needs and what are the things. But it's important that the leadership team needs to be able to, 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 to present the case and to let them know where and how can we augment the volunteer to be part of the organization's success. Yeah, that's, that's my view. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Casper. And, and maybe to, to Limi as well, if you would like to share some insights on that. Um, Gasper shared about how the leadership must be, uh, you know, bought in also themselves, walking the talk in order to then convince boards. Maybe I'll just do a little different take and different angle on that. How do you think volunteer managers can convince their CEOs, you know, in order for them to then convince the board? So maybe you could share from this angle so that we all could learn and, you know, articulate the impact better. You know, is it moral suasion or relational skills? You know, what is it? What does it take? you know, to, to convince our CEOs uh, to come on board with us even more at, at a strategic level, uh, not, not, not off-level, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so I think um, maybe the, the second part of the comment or question, essentially colleagues could be too busy, they could be very involved in the operations work, but the bosses are supportive. I, I would say that maybe can get the bosses to sponsor a project um, that you can bring on to a team that could be more open. So for example, for, for this thing center, essentially we talk about our social enterprises. Our social enterprises are actually very um, busy on a day-to-day -day operations fulfilling projects. So it, it may not be um, such an appropriate uh, platform for us to have a community engagement kind of uh, volunteers coming in. But our day activity center actually really needs community engagement uh, volunteers. And that's where um, the, the um, BM team actually talked to our um, DAC site to say in, maybe we can structure this um, project with uh, the IHL and then getting myself involved in, um, in, in so-called sponsoring that project and giving talks to the students. So I, I think it's a way actually to, um, to engage um, the bosses uh, in, in sponsoring projects as well to convince the rest of the organizations that maybe if this, this project is successful, we could also replicate some parts of this into the other parts of the organization. Yeah, thanks, Limi. I thought that's an interesting idea to scope out uh, some, some roles, you know, as even as we're doing volunteer role redesigning for our own volunteers. But by here, you it's also about you know using that same you know design thinking kind of uh, models in our heads to also see uh, what projects can we scope up for perhaps for our leaders and uh, CEOs or you know heads of departments to to take that charge and to take that lead and immerse them into that journey so that they could perhaps understand better and with their understanding and conviction they can then better champion it alongside us lah, together so so thanks Lime for that perspective I, I really thought it's really good um, to, to firm in uh, I just want to add on to what uh, you know uh, Yik, um, you know from beyond social services is also asking a very good question it gels in with another question in the, in the poll, but it's about how can volunteer managers present data and info insights 
or two boards to senior management in order to articulate better the important roles that they play uh, and the impact to the organization? What kind of data takes? Uh, what kind of information should they be presenting so that they could also reverse engineer and work backwards to capture them now via systems? I, I expect the boards are always going to be interested in a few things, uh, but chief among them are going to be how many clients they would serve, um, how satisfied were they with the service or, or what was the outcome uh, of the service um, and how much did it cost us to serve them. Um, I, I start from a premise that Boards are mostly interested in the answer to the question, how do we know if this year was better than last year? Or how do we know that next year is going to be better than this year for the entire agency? So that usually has to do with the overall mission of the agency. So it, it, I think it's a much better idea to frame uh, proposals as well as to frame reports to the board in that context, in the context of because of volunteering, we were able to serve more clients. Because of volunteering, we were able to improve the level of satisfaction uh, that um, our clients are receiving. Because of volunteering, we were able to lower the cost of delivering these services. There may be other advantages that the board might care about, like because of volunteering, we were able to increase the engagement of employees or decrease the turnover of employees, less burnout. Um, so I, I would advise that you don't go to the board simply with how many volunteers that we have and how many of those were uh, doing more than uh, you know 30 hours a year and how much money that it represents. These are interesting items. Yes, we should have them, but that is not what the board would endorse. The board is really always going to endorse quality of service, volume of service, cost of the service um, as a priority. And, and to me, that's what, how we should frame these, uh, these responses. Mm. Thanks, thanks, Fernand. Um, would would Lime or Gasper want to add to, to that on any um, data or any way of framing? Um, you know, what uh, we do to bots so that uh, we could better, uh, you know, uh, articulate impact. For me, it's, um, it's about new opportunities. So um, earlier, me I shared about our social enterprises, how volunteers actually came in with new ideas uh, to move our social enterprises forward. And that would actually be presented to the board to say, okay, we are going to um, do this going forward. And that's something that uh, we could also inject into the work plan. So it's really about um, new ideas, new opportunities that, that we can gain from volunteers as well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So I think really with the data, with all these insights uh, which we collect, I think it's, it's indeed uh, perhaps better to also ask for funding uh, from the board. And I, I, I recently I spoke to one, one CEO of a charity and he was actually saying that he's using some of these uh, data insights and the work that's been done to ask for funding for more headcounts for the volunteer managers to expand the team. So I think uh, to all our volunteer managers over here today, I think I'll uh, put for thought to see how you could start uh, building systems or, or building a way to, to, to collect data, um, you know, uh, to measure impact and also perhaps to measure the satisfaction in, uh, from the volunteers uh, themselves. Um, the other question um, in the poll, um, I thought it's interesting and, and just want to open up to, to anyone to, to answer. Uh, is um, on volunteer committees, um, because at this stage, some charities, they do have volunteer committees, um, like a subcommittee that reports to the board, you know, and some discuss about volunteer management, um, you know, from through the HR committees. So I just wanted to hear from uh, any one of you on your thoughts about, you know, um, having such committees to better have a, um, to better cover and to give strategic direction to the volunteer manager management team in the charity. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, maybe I can chime in here. Um, so we, we make a change, uh, a decision to change the role of our HR committee. Um, previously, HR committee only look at the staff uh, uh, policies, welfare, compensation, and things like that. But um, three years ago, we make a, a, a change. We expanded the, the, the role of uh, HR committee to include volunteer uh, uh, issues, right? Um, so we, that's why we 
in you know our HR committee will look at uh, resource human resources as as one you know where it's staff and volunteers and uh, every time we you know so so they will be responsible to look at um, the staff welfare staff uh, policy you know and things like that they will also be o- overseeing the policy in terms of how do we manage volunteers you know the volunteer handbook and all these things training and things like that so we want to make sure that um, both staff and volunteer receive the equal attention and uh, and uh, priority you know as our as our human resource so maybe would you want to add to that as well? Thanks, Jasper, um, on the volunteer role of volunteer communities. Well, well, it basically signals that the board is serious about it and that the board actually does see it as, as strategic. Um, um, and, and, and if you have board members that have some degree of expertise on volunteerism, particularly on how to attract and how to, the, the care and feeding of volunteers, uh, and, and they can be uh, advisors to, to management in terms of how to run uh, a better volunteering program, then by all means, this is great. So, um, but ideally you don't want to just give it to somebody that doesn't understand volunteering. Um, you want to give it to people who uh, have a sense of what it takes. In particular, I'd be um, bold enough to say that you should have somebody with some degree of HR expertise because a lot of the skills that are going to be required in volunteering um, uh, are related to HR, how to recruit volunteers, how to train volunteers, how to retain volunteers, and so forth. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it, it, it is a way to ensure that we are serious about volunteering as a strategic tool for the organization. Yeah, thanks, Fermin. Um, we have one question um, to as well as uh, uh, Gasper. I'll address this to you, Lat. So um, the question is about asking SOS. You know how how you you shared about skills based volunteerism earlier on differing functions that you've you've managed to successfully get them involved uh, beyond your services. So how did you how did SOS manage to involve these volunteers in your organization's strategic projects? Um, and um, um, and do you use volunteers also outside of board? Uh, yes, I think um, it's a very interesting question and uh, maybe I can share this uh, uh, um, starting from the board, right? So uh, two years ago, we you know have a board retreat and we look at some of the issue and we say, hey, we want to really look at the next five years, what we're going to do, and how we're going to do and how SOS is going to move forward. And, uh, you know, the board retreat, we decide and discuss and we say, that, okay, let's review three things, you know, uh, let's review our the way we want to serve our client, the way we want to engage our stakeholders. And the third one is the way, you know, with all these things in place, then do we want to look at the way we govern the organization? So there are three uh, parts of it. And, and we decided, yes, we want to start doing this. And we, we, we started uh, the three task force, right? Uh, starting with the way we engage and the way we, we serve. Uh, we do have uh, volunteers that are serving our, our uh, that, that are in our services and program in this task force. We also have, uh, um, you know, a domain expert uh, from the sector. Uh, we actually invite uh, Priscilla to be in one of the um, uh, task force, all right? Um, and also uh, many other um, agency uh, expert, you know, we invited them in. Uh, we also have our staff inside. So it's a, it's a collaborative effort of uh, uh, subject matter expert, you know, the volunteer that we have and also our staff to look at the way we serve, the way we engage, all right? And um, it's very important that uh, we hear, you know, different views and they have come up with a long list of things and it's very useful. And, and that actually helped us uh, to shape, you know, our next five years strategic plan, and which is now in place, right? So, so that's that's one way. Uh, I think you know we can involve um, volunteers and uh, and also volunteers outside the organization, right? So that we can give uh, like d- different view, right? And and some of the volunteers outside the organization may give their expert views, you know, from the the outside organization perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yes. Thanks, Jasper. I, I remember attending the very first uh, meeting uh, by SOS. I just share with you what I was so impressed, uh, you know, uh, in how um, 
SOS is using volunteer management as a strategic lever to catalyze their organizational uh, plan. I think as at that point in time was just fresh off a board retreat to chart out their three to five years uh, forward plan. And I remember the very first meeting that all the, the volunteers or the task force members went into, the very first thing on the agenda was um, Gasper sharing with all the volunteers about the organizational uh, forward plans so that we could then um, reverse engineer to then wrap around the, the whole of organizations and needs to then be able to think about the recruitment, the strategizing, so that, that the strategic lenses has been layered on. And then, of course, the, the strong operations that, you know, our volunteer managers will need to have. So I thought those um, long-term, uh, uh, long-sighted and that short, short-sighted, um, you know, that, that view, I thought was really important, um, really to bring volunteer management, you know, up a notch at a more strategic level uh, to help the organization uh, charge forth, lah. Yeah, I'll pose the next question to Lime. Um, uh, thanks, thanks, Gasper, for sharing. Um, Lime, your, 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 um, this team was so involved in our consultancy project, and we have also seen a lot of good progress that came out of it, you know, um, and lots of hard work, um, you know, over a 12 month period, which you and your team invested the time into uh, investing into volunteer management, knowing that this will also help to catapult the organization's uh, momentum and, and, and take them forward. Um, you talked about corporate partnerships earlier. So I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, from the management's perspective, um, how can, uh, how can uh, volunteer managers, uh, you know, take uh, a corporate partnership, uh, um, you know, for volunteer management, how, how could they uh, done for more such strategic partnerships versus perhaps, you know, liaising one-to-one -one with individual volunteers? Um, that, that would take up a lot of their time, but when we elevate it to a higher level to perhaps think about sweeping in ways of volunteers, uh, 100 uh, corporate volunteers, 200, um, you know, true corporate partnerships, that would also have uh, leveled up our strategy, volunteer management strategy. So how would you, what would you be your advice uh, on how, you know, we could take that to that uh, level? Okay, so for us, I think, um, yeah, as I shared earlier, we are really not looking at the numbers of volunteers because uh, for us, it's really about where does the volunteers best sit in, in the work of the organization uh, in serving our beneficiaries. So one example would be, for example, our data management uh, social enterprise. Um, the, the clients there are mainly doing computer-related work like data entry, data scanning. Uh, we are trying to actually move them into things like um, basic coding, um, data labeling or data annotation, for example. And these are actually potential skill sets that uh, some of the IT companies could actually have volunteers coming in to, to teach them. So actually for us, it's really identifying where are the so-called sweet spot that we can engage corporate volunteers in. Uh, because for us, I guess in the past when we engage corporate volunteers, it could be in day fundraising, it could be um, our fact day, going out once off, but um, on a regular engagement or a more a deeper engagement level, I think it's really for us to curate that kind of uh, opportunities uh, within the organization for them. Thanks, 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 Lime. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, I I know there there are lots of uh, stories also out there in the, the media where um, a lot of charities increasingly are signing uh, also MOUs, you know, with the corporates to signal that commitment. Uh, at the same time, to also ensure a regular supply of volunteers, lah, so that you know, post COVID, I think we all have seen how important volunteer continuity is. Um, uh, I think um, uh, that's really something that uh, NCSS is also trying to to drive uh, across the sector on such models of volunteering, where it will help us to have a more sustained approach. Um, perhaps um, uh, before we, we wrap up, you know, the, the panel, um, uh, just, uh, you know, um, one, one question perhaps just to, to uh, get everyone to, to share is um, um, how, how important, um, you know, given we talk about strategy and, you know, in order to think long term, it's important for volunteer managers to have structure within the organization to ensure that there are processes, good practices in place. A volunteer management framework. So, so where do you see such uh, processes or frameworks in place? I mean, they sound very technical sometimes and takes take a lot of time to also institutionalize within the organization. But how important do you see all these in the context of a longer term strategy where we have big dreams and we want to go for them, but yet we also need to have all these frameworks in place? Where do you see that correlation to one another? Maybe Fermin, um, you can start. Ah, where to start? Actually, I think every organization probably starts at a different place. 
Um, not everybody needs to start in exactly the same place. Um, you may start with your current set of volunteers. Um, and how do you go from there? I think that um, may be a good avenue for, for, for people. How do you improve what you're already doing? Um, uh, for some organizations, it may be more about structure and, and creating processes and creating policies. Um, so that may be another way. For other organizations, it may be about gathering data and collecting data about um, the, the impact. So I, I think different organizations probably have different starting points and, and they may not necessarily uh, all want to start in the exact same place. Uh, however, they should all end in the same place. And, and that's what we discussed earlier, that uh, it is about how to improve service quality, how to improve service volume, and how to improve service cost. Thanks, thanks, um, Maybe uh, Gaspar and Dime? Yeah. Um, OK, so I think um, in this fast evolving landscape, um, very, I totally agree. You know, very difficult. You know, different organization may have different starting point or entry point. But um, if I may say, I think uh, NCSS uh, may you know have launched a very good uh, program, which is the what you are talking about, right? Volunteer management uh, capability development um, project, right? Or consultancy, right? Um, so if if you are lost and don't know where to start, I think this is where one place that you can. Uh, subscribe to right and then uh, they will be able to help you to know where you know, where is your starting point or where is the best entry point for you to 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 start scoping or or reviewing your volunteer management framework and and, and how do you want to organize your volunteers yeah i think that's a good very very good uh, project yeah thanks, thanks gasper yeah for the information yeah li, li Mei? yeah I think for us, it's really about the identification of the key focus areas that we should look at and also the gaps that we have in the organization. Because um, day in, day out, when our team runs uh, the operations or chasing after volunteers, donors, numbers, we may not be able to see some of the gaps that we have. So the framework is actually quite useful for us to identify which are the areas that we want to focus on, which are the gaps that we want to close. And um, even as simple as having, say, a, a survey to figure out what are the staff motivation, what are the areas that potentially we can work on after the volunteers have come in. I think these are really important um, inputs for us to figure out how to engage the next, next round of uh, volunteering or next, next group of volunteers. So the, the framework helped us in, in structuring that. Thanks so much, Lime. I think um, I think what, what I can hear from um, you know the, the, the blended content and sharing from three of you would be that you know um, doesn't matter at which point in time it is, but it's it's good to start. It's good to start and to help to build a stronger version of yourself through um, you know certain frameworks or institutionalized process, so that even as you think more strategically and as you help the organization succeed through volunteer management, you are also better poised uh, with all these um, institutionalized process to take you further, to take you faster, you know, into the future for your organization and more importantly for our service users la. so um, you know um, maybe just one last um, you know um, uh, question to, to all of you in five words uh, what would be the final word final <laughs> what would be your final you know um, any 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 um, things you want to leave behind for our audience today who took that afternoon to come and listen in and to grow in this aspect you know to be more strategic in that um, you know uh, thinking to, to to level up you know what they are already doing uh, great what they are doing but they, they want to be better versions of themselves what are could you just do a, just use five words <laughs> to just sum up what you want to say to our audience today five words for me, for me try. <laughs> okay leave me, leave me, you go first <laughs> Don't be afraid to pilot. Wow. <laughs> I think for us, it's really nice. to pilot um, wow. new, new initiatives uh, to, wow. to kickstart something so that we know whether <laughs> it works or don't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess it helps to have an open-minded management uh, or leadership mm. who, who can tolerate pilots. So I, I think it's important nice. for the team to understand. Don't be afraid to pilot. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay five words, five words. <laughs> no, after that was more words. <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> So yeah, th thanks. Start small, dream big, huh? um, but don't be afraid. Uh, have faith. I, I like that. Thanks so much. Uh, who wants to go next? 
I'll, I'll go next. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Measure. I, I think that was the main question the other day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm following his question, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Habits from me, yes. Yeah, yeah, this is from you, like, this idea from you. <laughs> Just he was moderating another session with Singapore Institute of Directors. I oh. also asked the same question. So today I asked back. <laughs> mm. so, uh, monitor data quality, uh, cost, volume. Wow. Monitor data quality, cost, and volume. Okay, you can elaborate. Okay, I'll let you elaborate a little bit. Like maybe I'll share a little bit. It's the same same I said earlier, which is make sure that you measure outcomes, not just outputs, la, not just yeah. uh, number. Mm, noted measure progressive states la, versus uh, still short or screenshot at that point in time. What is the data? Uh, what yeah. are you exactly trying to you know move the needle? Uh, Word is would be engagement. So measure quality, volume, cost, and engagement. Mm, okay, got it. All in five words. Noted. <laughs> Okay, that's for real. I'm still thinking. Are you thinking? Still thinking of my words? I, I, I'm not good at this. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, I can get five words. I can have four words. Um, think sustainability and uh, think one resource. Wow. Think sustainability, think one resource. Got like five words. Can, five. can. Yeah. Can. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, one resource. Okay, maybe elaborate. Um, is it one uh, manpower resource? That means uh, both yeah, staff and volunteers. Ah, one people. Uh, la, one people. Yeah. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Shall we give a round of applause? Or whether virtual or, you know, you do really. Uh, let's give a round of applause to all our three panel speakers, really, for taking time to uh, speak into all of us, um, all these nuggets of wisdom. Um, and uh, uh, th thanks, uh, Gaspar, Fermin, and Dimei once again uh, for being here with us.